Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome to the channel. I am uh, the Bardic Knock. I am the Game Master for today. Uh, we are playing the Final Fantasy D6 system. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll I'll explain stuff. Uh, or I'll say I'll explain it and then never actually do. We'll be fine. Um, you can find me on the internet, Twitter, Twitch, Patreon, YouTube, all that jazz as the Bardic Knock. And I will leave it at that for now and throw the talkie ball down to our birthday girl uh, uh hi <laughs> i am a tired i am also got birthday today and <laughs> it has is not the anniversary of when i was cursed upon this world <laughs> According to some circles. Uh. Anyway, I was gonna say something else that was funny, but then, but then my brain completely lost train of thought. Uh. I am playing as the resident, edgy dark knight, Lilith. Uh, and who is, who didn't expect when going on to a pilgrimage as a guardian to be stealing the boat of a Trump ripoff, but you know, these sort of things just happen. So you might as well roll with it. Yeah, it's, uh, I think that's a good uh, part of life. <laughs> yeah, just, just roll with it. So. Yeah! Just roll with it. It's fine. Uh, you can also find me every second Thursday on Undead K's channel. Where we play Curse of Strahd, and last time we met Ismark, I'm pretty sure I'm butchering his name, and his sister Irina, and we had a, basically a big info dump, dump uh, episode, and also been to a second funeral on that day in Barovia, as you do. And also, you can find me lurking around in various other places where I make shitty puns and other shitty jokes, and it's great. I think you're downplaying uh, uh, the, the quality of your puns. <laughs> I am told that my puns are shitty. Well, Who's telling you that? I will fight them. Myself. <laughs> It's fine. It's um, fine, it's fine, it's fine. Okay, so I think Natch threatening to fight people is a good way to introduce himself. Natch, yeah. who are you? Um, I, I mean, I will fight people with love. Um, so I'm Natch, uh, and I'm playing the party daddy, Malcolm. Uh, and you can find me mostly on Twitter where I rage against the machine. Um, with my hot takes at Natural One. Mm. That's mostly it. I don't have much else. Is mm. asking for basic human rights a hot take? Uh, you know <laughs> what? You would be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> As I said it out loud, I was like, oh shit, I guess it is. Yeah, no, it is a hotter take than you would think. <laughs> How dare anybody do such a, like, offensive and, like, outrageous thing. Basic. Mm. How dare. <laughs> How uh, my, dare. My most recent obsession has been uh, people's raging against the fantasy wheelchair. It's uh, It's been a real good time. Oh, real? Uh. <laughs> uh, all, I, all I can say is, uh... Yeah, pretty much. Anyway, I've got lots of fun takes. I... Well, you can say it's Scottish accent. <laughs> what? <laughs> I have a Scottish said, accent? No, because I went, ach. Ach. Like, ach. Ach, nee. Oh, that's kind of ach. German, though. <laughs> oh, uh, German. How about a Guten Tag. So German is kind of roundabout here, and it's all hot do 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 And then it veers off into something entirely different. Fair enough. <laughs> Because uh, we all establish the more NPCs that appear, my accents, they start off kind of nearly there, and then they become something entirely different, like three sentences later. 
but <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> and As you do. With that, uh, Nash, unless there's anything else you wanted to say before. That's I it for me. Yep. And then we can throw it on over to our. <laughs> I was about to say a uh, resident exploding cat, like boom kitty. Like what? What, what do we call? Boom kitty. Uh, yeah. I mean, your last name is Boom. Uh, sorry, I am still asleep. <laughs> I am Rain Hayes, and you can find me here. You can find me at uh, Shay Foxy's channel on Tuesday nights playing Orlight Codex Calgary. Um, next Saturday, you can find me on, I think it's on Shay's channel. Uh, also playing a Chronicles of Darkness game. Oh, and that since I don't cool. have any new products, I'm pretty sure that's it. <laughs> the new product, the Boom Kitty. Now you yeah. too can own a kitty <laughs> that makes bombs. And, well, yeah. Yeah, Bomb. I mean, Bomb's not included. It, considering the ideas that Bardic and I had for her future, <laughs> bombs not included. The bombs are sold separately. Well, she can she can summon them. <laughs> <laughs> her first spell is Goblin Bomb. So <laughs> okay. Alrighty, so that uh, we do have another player, but sadly uh, they are really not feeling very well. So uh, our other player, who you should also check out, uh, you can find them. As uh, Kupo Knight, uh, Kupo spelled with a zero on Twitter, and I think it's like Kupo underscore Knight on Twitch. I'd have to double, or maybe it's Kupo spelled with a zero underscore Knight. On, I don't know. Kupo Knight, uh, find them. They're they're really good. Uh, they they stream like a couple times a week. Uh, I think they're currently working through Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Uh, it's good stuff. Go check them out. They are a wonderful, wonderful human being. And. Uh, I hope they feel better real soon. Same. Okay, so, recap on what happened last time. After the party woke up from a weird collective dream, they had a chat. They they all went, all right, yeah, let's work together. You know, we, we shared a dream. Uh, that, that means something, I guess. Walked out. That's how I make all my friends. <laughs> Just, oh. We were in a dream together. Let's be friends. Uh, stepped outside, found there was some big palaver going on. Found the worst uh, human being in all of existence. And when you don't deserve a boat, you you <laughs> no, you 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 are not you do not deserve boat. We take boat. <laughs> You, you maybe get boat back when you are not literal human garbage. We were lying. We're going to sink the boat. <laughs> we're going to sink the boat. I mean... It's my birthday. We must sink the boat. <laughs> <laughs> is, is that going to be your excuse? Every, it's my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if I roll two ones. It's my birthday. That's two sixes. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you sink the boat? It was my birthday. <laughs> So. I didn't roll two ones, I rolled 111. <laughs> I rolled 111, it's my birthday. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm already having a lot Didn't of must die, it's my birthday. Uh, I, uh, I, re I really must stress how much I enjoy playing with this group, just because, I don't know, it, it's fun. <laughs> I, I, I actively feel like anything that has been like a bit meh. I mean, it's the same for my other group I run, uh, the One Piece game, but if I've had like a meh week, I know when I get to play these games, it immediately perks me off. I'm like, oh yeah, I get to interact with these people and just have fun. Aww. <laughs> Aww. So yeah, take that mushy stuff right at your face. Um... Take that, depression. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Alrighty. So, you're on a boat. Uh, to redescribe I'm on this. a boat. Oh. Yeah. That's <laughs> old memes. I'm on a boat. Uh, <laughs> describing it from last time, this boat is kind of hideous. You know, it, it's ornate. It's um, 
it, it's just over the top. What? It, it, it's just bougie, but like bougie with zero class. Um, so, so basically, the meme that I posted. <laughs> <laughs> So, for reference, the meme is a picture of a crab on top of what appears to be, like, uh, an albino... I want to say... Crocodile? I want to say alligator because its snoot is slightly uh, stunted and slightly wider than... Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. So, and the crab has got its claws up saying, Go up, my noble steed. And I I feel that that is weirdly appropriate because you're all just standing on this thing, you don't know how it works, (laughs) and saying, go. I mean, I feel... I feel like Record. that is an insult to the to the gator, though, because we're <laughs> saying that, that he's like this boat, or she. I don't know this alligator's life. For the record, I made both of those memes. <laughs> oh, you made my nice. damn meme. Yeah. <laughs> That's beautiful. I I've just seen that one so often. I forget that you're the first person. Like, I forgot that you made it. I've just seen it so many times. <laughs> <laughs> But it's a very good meme. Uh, the other meme is a, a little tiny owl turning its head and it just says, How dare. And How yeah, dare. It's good memes. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, because Kupo is not here, I'm having to quickly change a few things because originally there was going to be like a, a nice boss battle here because uh, I thought that would be cool and interesting and really let us sink our teeth into some, uh, <laughs> into some like, combat mechanics and mess around with stuff. But we can just delay also, that. Sp- also, spoiler alerts, we were going to fight a boss this session. Yeah. But we can delay that and we can wait until Kupo's here and we can do something else. So instead, we are going to basically have a beach episode, except on the boat. Um, so, uh, I suppose the first thing I should really ask, uh, and I know I've asked this like out of session, but I feel like I need to ask it again just for, uh, you know, <laughs> for viewers' sake. Does anybody know how to drive a boat? Uh, uh, is this uh, a sailboat, or does it have an engine? Um, that's a good point. Somebody should go and check that out. I look up. Do I see sails? Uh, you see some sails, <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. I look down. It's do a sailboat. I see an engine? <laughs> you just look down on the deck and go, hey, nope, I don't see an engine right here on the deck. I'm not going I'm not going under the deck. I'm not exploring. I look and do I see engine? I will go explore. I feel like Lilith is just exploring the main deck, just looking down like, how the fuck is this gaudy thing even floating? Okay. You'd think they would just sink to the depths. So... Using my memory of the two boats in Final Fantasy X, which are literally exactly the same, uh, I think one has like one extra room and whatever. So basically, the way these are laid out is there's quite a large uh, main deck, uh, and then there's like a, a, a bow at the front. Is it, yeah, I think it's called a bow. You can, as, as we know, Bardic right here knows so much about boats. <laughs> um, <laughs> And then there's, like, a sail over the top. Uh, it's not, like, a classical, like, rectangular sail. It's kind of more akin to, like, a triangle shape. Uh, oh, so oh. It, it seems like that probably has more to do with steering and maybe to get some additional power. It's not, like, a big classical uh, pirate ship type, big square sail, wind go whoosh. <laughs> um, then if you... There's like a a, a a box really, uh, a, which resembles like a building, like small, like an engine room type thing. Uh, so there's that. There is two staircases, one that goes up because there is another small deck uh, on top of this. So it's like a, a secondary deck which you can use to view and look out at stuff. Uh, and then there is a door at the back of said box, that's clearly how you get into little engine room, and there is a set of stairs going down below the deck. Aww. I'm gonna go poke the engine. Okay. <laughs> so, I am going to say, uh, for ease, the reason you got away is because Raiko came, uh, they looked around, 
and they accidentally uh, pushed something. You know, they, they pushed a button, they pushed a lever, <laughs> and that started the boat going. So that's how you sailed off. And you just kind of, you are vaguely going forward. <laughs> um, so that is how that works. Uh, the engine mm -hmm. room... God, you know, you'd think, if I was going to include this kind of stuff, you'd think I'd be smart enough to learn how to, like, describe mechanics. Uh, it, it is exactly how you think an engine room in a in Final Fantasy X would look like. Ah, hmm. uh, uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Mm. I'm sure we all got the same idea. <laughs> It's uh, like going down Plot Avenue. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. I, I guess there's probably like a small steering wheel. There'll be a little mat. There'll be a, a, like a, a, a chart, like a, a table which you've got a chart on, you know, you know, like the little compass and stuff like that for measuring out courses and things. And obviously it's got like windows so you can see out the front so you can plot and navigate stuff. Um, there'll be various technical uh, doohickeys um, that, that probably do stuff. I mean, look, I, I think I'm doing a fantastic job of describing what all this <laughs> stuff would look like to people who don't know what the hell it is. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> yeah, uh, you, you are. You're doing fine, don't worry. <laughs> okay, so, so none of us have a clue as to how to drive the boat. <laughs> no. I feel, like, I feel like swimming would be may, way more e easier. I mean, it can't be that hard, right? Hey, can I roll a lore everything check and see if I have any clue what to do? Uh, please do. Please see if somebody can figure this stuff out. <laughs> so we got a seven. Okay, so seven. Uh, let me check my doodad. Okay, so seven is considered easy. So if you can roll a seven, you can um, you know do something basic. So you can look at this and go, Okay, I have a basic understanding of how boats work, you know. Um, mm -hmm. they, 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 they are like moving buildings on water that, you know, Sounds right. wind goes whoosh, but also sometimes not just wind, sometimes other things? <laughs> sometimes <laughs> other gay things go. Uh, you, you can kind of look around and go, okay, you know, I, I get the basic idea. You know, there's this little thing here. Uh, there's a there's a big red uh, lever that says anchor, pull this to stop, go for, to not move. Um, <laughs> I, I I think that's basically what you get. It's like, all right, so that's the that's the the stop and that's the go. And there's a wheel that you go, okay, I. I've seen this. You, you know, you, you, you've read books mm -hmm. where, you know, dashing pirate captains who are clearly gay uh, stand there with long flowing hair, shirt, like, half open, and standing there and just, like, grabbing the steering wheel and go, ha-ha! So, you, you get the gist of it. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. uh, is, there, is there a small, like, box or crate somewhere near the steering wheel? Um, yeah, sure, why not? Okay, so I'm going to take that and I'm going to push it towards the steering wheel. Uh, then I'm going to put one foot up on the box and say, ha ha! And then I start driving the boat. <laughs> Turning the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Ah, you are clearly a master at this. <laughs> Very well then. Um, so just out of curiosity, did anybody else come into the... Uh, I, what... Helm? Let's call this the Helm. Sure. Is, um... <laughs> uh, just the idea that you've done that, and you go, Aha! You know, uh, for ease, I'll say Riker was in there, and Riker was somehow accidentally yeah. made it go, so... Uh... I, I'm assuming that wherever Raiko goes, Lilith is it's... following, like, I need to make sure you don't, don't like, get killed or anything. So... Who knows what's on this boat? Raiko will stand there, kind of I'm... in shock and awe, and goes, Oh, wow. Yeah, you, you, you must be really skilled um, in, in all kinds of things. Do you, do, 
do this a lot? Like, it, what, what, what's the technique for it all? Do, it, do, do, does having your foot elevated like that, does that give you better, uh, is that a, a more secure stance? Uh, for uh, yeah, and it and it really helps the um, aerodynamics of the ship. Wow! Really it helps cool. us go faster. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think I can feel it's going faster. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm mhm. Mm. So hopefully we should be getting to our destination uh, soon. Uh, I yes, don't... definitely. <laughs> there... Definitely soon. Uh, can I? Is there a compass near me? <laughs> um. Yeah. I'll say. Uh. There'll be like embedded in the uh, like near the steering wheel. There'll be a compass like embedded into the the work. Just make yes. sure we are actually going south. <laughs> yes. Uh. You you see there's a there's a big S and you are moving in that direction. Perfect. That <laughs> um, <laughs> I. Actually, yeah, because you know what, like Luca. I suppose you you can just kind of go by eye. Like if you go like directly mm -hmm. south from Luca here, you're like literally direct south until you see an island, and then go ah, and then just make a right. Like, <laughs> we should a, turn. Yeah, make a right angle turn. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 You. So you're you're doing that. Um. That'll keep you distracted for a little bit. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> That'll keep you kids out of trouble. <laughs> um, is there anything else you want to do in this immediate scene right here? Or should we jump over and see what Reno is doing if they've gone to... We can see what Reno's doing as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Yeah. So... Reno is literally crouched on a crate next to the engine, gently tapping it with a wrench. <laughs> okay, so you've gone under deck. Yes. Okay, so if you go under the deck, um, it's still very ostentatious down here, very over the top. Uh, you see, like, tapestries woven and all that jazz. And you see a few rooms. Uh, there's one room that clearly says engine room. Uh, so that's the obvious one to go into. If you step inside the engine room, um, first thing you hear is um, you're, you're fairly certain you can hear music coming from in there. Uh, the... Yeah, you know what, uh, I, I, I can hum the music. So the, the, it's quite faint from the outside room, but you're fairly certain you can hear... <laughs> so that's what you can hear from the outside, and you get the occasional... We <laughs> <laughs> found the chocobos! I pull out my, my chocobo whistle like, did I, did I sound this before we left? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to peek through the door. Like, are there chocobos in here? Yeah, uh, you see what are essentially two giant hamster wheels with a chocobo in each of them. Uh, they seem pretty content. They've got like a little feedback on, and they're running in the giant hamster wheels. I'm going to stare at them for a moment. <laughs> Very gently close the door. <laughs> yeah, uh, the, these I'll, boats run on chocobo power. I'll come back to this <laughs> because I had an idea. Um, Why is it I don't trust that? <laughs> I I want to go look for Frump's room. <laughs> okay, so um, you there, there's a few other rooms. There's like a, you know, one room. Yeah, fine, whatever. It doesn't look important. There's another room which, you know. The, the door frame has been like painted gold and it's got little statues in front of it and you know uh, it, it's clearly the kind of room that someone who thinks they're really impressive would do and make it all about themselves so you, you can find a Perunk's room really easy yep that's where I'm going in <laughs> yep. uh, you, you just step inside um, yeah, for ease, I'm not going to bother saying it's locked or anything. That's, uh, that's effort. They so just open it up. It's disgusting. Like, gold. Gold everywhere. Just, you know, it's like... <laughs> okay, so the vast majority of people, I assume, have seen images from inside Trump's Manhattan apartment, right? Mm-hmm. Mm. And it's just disgusting. 
It, it's it's yeah, just much. that. It, it, it is literally just that. <laughs> I'm going to stretch my arms, crack my knuckles, crack my neck, and get down to work. I'm going to... Um, all Everything that's like a small statue or a lantern or anything that's small and carryable, mm -hmm. I'm going to take up to the top deck. Mm -hmm. uh, everything else... I'm going to go look for some cans of paint. <laughs> uh, what are the cans of paint on? You know what? I want to find out what's going on. So, yeah, you know what? If you go and check in the other room, uh, you, there, there are cans of paint. You can tell they've had to you know, recently paint the, the deck or paint something. You know, keep it safe. Keep stuff <laughs> interesting, I guess. Yeah, the, the thought I had is that ships would have tar to repair the ship while they're sailing. This is but this, they would. But this is Trump. He would want to keep up appearances. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they probably have they probably have to repaint the damn thing every day. <laughs> oh god. They yeah. probably would, wouldn't they? So I'm going to take some paint back down into that ostentatious apartment mm -hmm. and just start graffitiing all over <laughs> everything. Um, what are some of the things you, you do? Uh, other than the obvious, you know, Reno is here and a cat face with X eyes and a tongue sticking out. Um, I'll put things like uh, uh, down with prompt. No, I was thinking um, I should do. I'm going to paint some fire on the floor and put feel the burn. <laughs> and and uh, along the mirror, put like uh, Sandrezo should have won. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I'll and then I'll put a giant golden chocobo on the ceiling, crapping onto the bed. <laughs> Mm. Pure, pure artistry. <laughs> and then I'll go. I feel up. like I find out too more hilarious than I should. <laughs> I'll, I'll go up to where I'd stacked everything that I had pulled out of the room, mm -hmm. and I'll start flinging it into the air and having target practice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, target practice with what exactly? My gun blade. <laughs> so. Um, jumping back to the the helm, you you probably heard some clattering and some clanging and all that. And now, if you look outside onto the deck, you can just see uh, Reno chucking up clearly very valuable, or at least things that look very valuable objects, and just shooting them out of the sky as she throws them up and makes them go boom. Um. <laughs> okay. Reno has her priority straight. <laughs> What, what, are, what are people thinking and feeling in the, the helm? Uh, um. Honestly, I am not sure where Lilith would be. Brain is sort of like, it's still a tiny bit tired, so it's like, what, what to do? Too many <laughs> ideas. Um, Malcolm would probably just be focused on trying his best to drive this thing. Okay. Well, in that case, Malcolm, can you roll me a vehicles check? Mm -hmm. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, I'm fairly certain that, that is literally just you rolling 2d6. <laughs> I'm going to go on a limb and assume you don't have any... Uh, any points in vehicles? No, I don't. Uh, it's seven. Okay, seven, uh, which is easy. So you can... Lucky seven. You can easily... You, you, you can press go forward, and you can keep on a straight course, uh, providing nothing Perfect. drastic changes or nothing terrible happens. Um, we'll eventually get to our destination. Eh, eventually. Mm. So, eventually. 
Uh, for for ease, just explain it. I'm going to assume that coupon uh, they've gone up. I'm going to say they're up on the top deck and they're having a, a happy little nap. Aww. Uh, that's where they are. So they are just tucked out of the way, not getting in anybody's <laughs> business, and just enjoying uh, the, the fresh sea air. They're, they're in the crow's nest, but instead it's the coupon nest. Yes. <laughs> the coupon nest. The moogle's nest. Moogle's nest. All righty. So, as you're all doing this, you're all having uh, a fun time going, hey, this is pretty cool. We got a boat. We stole it. How's that? Nice. Mm. Um, this can go on for, you know, However long seems reasonable, uh, you know, maybe, I think maybe an hour is probably as long. I, I imagine that being as long as Reno can focus on doing one thing, uh, doing the, the target practice until you run out of stuff to shoot. Um, yeah, after that I'd probably try fishing to get yeah. fish for the chocobos. <laughs> okay, that's actually really cool. Um, all right. What would be an appropriate skill uh, to roll for fishing? I let's have a look. I think there's like a survival uh, scavenge. It's not scavenge. Not uh, nature, maybe. I think I do have. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, locate drinking water, forage food, avoid natural hazards. Yes, uh, nature would be the correct thing to do. Hmm. Uh, See, now I have the Chocobo song stuck in my head. Good. What was my modifier again? Hold on. Two. Uh, eight. Eight. All right, so yeah, that's uh, that's uh, simple again. Uh, well, easy, not simple. Uh, so, yeah, you, you, you do a decent job. Uh, you know, you catch a few fish... Got a few bits and bobs, like nothing like extreme or particularly special or anything uh, excessive. But one thing you do notice is one of these fish you pull out. And whereas, yeah, you know, all right, so that's a fish. That's a this. And those are fishes. Just many fishes. Uh, one fish you pull out doesn't seem to be a fish. In fact, it doesn't seem to be alive at all. Uh, it, it's kind of like a fish-shaped uh, stone. Hmm. And it, hmm. it seems to have a strange glow about it. <laughs> um, do you think monster lore would cover this? <laughs> It'd definitely be a starting point, but hmm. I'm going to pick it up and take it to. Uh, I have already Malcolm. There we go. Like I found a shiny. Uh, uh, weird looking. <laughs> um. Can I do my good old-fashioned lore everything check? You most certainly can. I fished it up. I don't know how I fished it up because it's a rock and I used to hook. Uh, ten. Ten. All right. So for reference, a ten, I believe... Yeah, okay. So moderate is nine, challenging is eleven. So this is a moderate uh, success. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So for a ten, you look at this and go, hmm, okay. Even if I don't know the exact specifics about this, one, I can tell that this is clearly, you know, uh, it's clearly magical in some way, shape, mm -hmm. or form. It's clearly tied into something else. Uh, looking at it, judging it, if I had to assess, it it looks old, uh, probably from, like, uh, an ancient civilization, or if not, like, ancient, ancient, you know, it's been now here a while maybe there's more things like this maybe it is a symbol of something maybe it could be tied into something important and the fact that you mm -hmm. found one means one of two things really either you just so happen to be nearby to 
remnants of a civilization or ruins of something where this could come from or this has floated this way because it has been disturbed like the ruins have been disturbed and they can't be that far away you know it is still a rock um, mm-hmm. it's not mm-hmm. gonna like travel hundreds and hundreds of miles okay we're um, still going south right uh, as far as I know yeah, uh-huh. you are still heading south yes correct Um, hmm. I'm gonna lick the signs. You're gonna do what? Right. Say what? Uh, what did you say you were gonna do? I'm gonna lick the signs. You're gonna oh, lick God. the signs. I mean, I don't have any better options, so. <laughs> So you get the oh, God. you get the shiny rock, and you lick it. Yep. Um, it's cold, and not like ooh, it's a rock cold. Like it is cold. Like it's kind of like licking an ice cube. Ooh. And it, mm-hmm. it kind of like maybe numbs your mouth a little. Like, nah, 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 nah. I don't know. Great. Does Rago have any ideas about what this might be? Hmm. Okay, that is a good question. Uh, yeah, you know what? Let's ask Rico. Rico is what would be a good thing? Uh, doop, 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 doop. Yeah. Okay. So Rico's gonna look at this. And Raiko's immediate uh, thought pattern is going to be, okay, I'm going to roll, I'm going to try and see if I've heard anything about this, uh, or if I've ever read anything about uh, weird rocks uh, in history, especially that look like this and look kind of fancy and magical. Uh, actually, I think instead, Raiko's going to focus on the magical side, so he's going to roll lore magic. And I rolled an 8 on the die, so plus Raiko's bonus. Uh, yeah, that's like an 11. Nice. So Raiko's like, oh, um, oh, you're, you're licking. Okay, um, I, I don't think you're supposed to lick that. Um, so I, mm, that that's actually a, a, a sphere. You know, I know it's not a sphere because it's in the shape of a fish, but uh, that's... Um, um, in 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 this book, uh, I read as part of my studying, where we we had to learn about the the different kinds of uh, spheres used in uh, the cloisters of trials. Uh, there there was rumors of a a, a temple once having um, having developed spheres that uh, control and manipulate water levels in a temple, but apparently that temple uh, was sunk and lost in the ocean. So. Well, I guess they weren't very good at manipulating the water levels. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to imagine Lilith just appear suddenly from the shadows and is like, huh, D- do you think that would be useful then? Well, um, the, the temples are used to to house Aeons. Well, they house the Faith, and the Faith is what gives me Aeons. And so I, I would assume it's if the temple exists, and if it hasn't been, like, you know, ripped apart by all kinds of things or you know whatever it, it, it means there might be a temple nearby and we uh, we, uh, we could maybe re- recruit an aeon can you sense it was that a, a thing you can do as a summoner we should probably drop anchor before we get too far away from it uh i <laughs> yeah, i make prolonged eye contact with reno and then i just Slowly reach my hand over to the anchor button and hit it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Boom. Um, yeah, the whole... so that, there's this. <laughs> boom. I... The whole time, the end of the stone is in my mouth as I'm gently <laughs> nomming on it. Uh, are you sure you should still be, be eating that, that spear stone? Spearfish? It tastes nummy. 
I don't think we have any evidence that you shouldn't eat it. I mean... <laughs> uh, just don't choke on it. That's all I ask. I'm not sure if this place has, like, even has, like, a medical bay. Uh, I wouldn't worry about it. I'm used to, you know, things like blowing up and and being catastrophic around me. Uh, That's really comforting to hear. Yes. <laughs> I've got a lot of stamina. <laughs> mm. Okay, so. Uh, you stop the boat. And a partner wants to make it a little bit dramatic, and you know, because you stop so suddenly, you just all get flung about. But I, I can't imagine that's how boats work. So, um, it... <laughs> I'm very curious I mean... how an anchor works on a chocobo powered ship. Like, what they just like put a little uh, sleeping mask over the chocobos when you stop the boat, <laughs> like that's what the anchor button actually is. It, it just drops little sleeping masks on the chocobos, and you go, ah. I mean, they just, have to. They it have drops to be a little blankets anyway. on the chocobos, yeah. and they are like, "Oh, but it's time for nap time." I mean, yeah, that would have to be like a physical anchor as well. So that drops, the boat stands still, and you are out in the the middle of the waters. Um, you you've been going for a good like two three hours, you know. So you can't. You can maybe in the vague distance see where Luca was. Uh, you can't really see anything the other way. Um, so you, you're a good, fair distance uh, away from shore, you know. If anybody was chasing you, they'd have to... They ain't anywhere close. So, um, you're pretty safe here, as far as you're aware. You've not seen any giant sea monsters or anything ridiculous come up, so, you know, it's fine. You can probably hang out here for a bit. <laughs> uh, do you think there would be any, like, telescopes or anything on the ship? Uh, yeah. Uh, if you go up onto the viewing deck, there'll definitely be, like, some telescopes. Oh. Uh, I'm thinking, like, if we are going to be on the lookout for a temple of sorts, Lilith is going to find, like, the nearest telescope and try to keep a lookout. Like, well, if we're going to look for this now, then might as well look out for it. Or look out for anything else. <laughs> I am a chaos child. Reno's going to stick the stone in her mouth like a pirate dagger and dive into the water. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, mm, I, I might have done a bad job of explaining it, but I just love the idea, because I, uh, you, know, you, you found this thing in the water. <laughs> it's been there a while, and the rumor was the it sank to the sea, and the look goes, I'm gonna go look and see if I can find it. <laughs> like, like oh. she's she's trying to look for like signs of okay where could it be maybe it's like poking out of the water. Okay, okay, yeah, actually that that's a lot smarter. Like in my mind, I don't know, I just found it so funny. Like, I'm looking, I'm I can't sorry, see the sunken brain, temple. My brain is is like is not good at words. No, or, uh, I, or explaining ideas. I thought I did a terrible job explaining, but no, it, it's fine. <laughs> okay, so you <laughs> it's want. It's fine. Do you want to roll me something, see if you can find any obvious uh, signs? What is... Uh, I suppose a aware... Yeah, I think awareness is the yeah. best thing to, what, to roll. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you can roll me an awareness, pretty please. Are okay. uh, both of us rolling, or just... Um, uh... Uh, Rain, I'm going to roll some... I'm, I'm going to have you roll something different, if you want. Because <laughs> you're just diving into the water. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so uh, a 13. 13 is actually pretty damn good. 13 counts as... Um, okay, so that's challenging. Impressive is 14, but challenging. Yeah, okay, so you, using the, the telescope, you kind of scour around, and you do notice. Not too far away. In fact, like it'd be quite easy to miss if you weren't paying attention. It's maybe... Uh, a couple hundred meters uh, off to, you know, the the starboard port side. Uh, <laughs> mhm. Mm the, the port. The starboard port side. Yeah, off to the, off to the starburst side. Off to the starburst side. 
and now I'm just realizing stop like the the candy starburst exists in America, right? I, I didn't just make a reference. Yes, yeah. Star okay. Starburst exists in Canada, so I would be shocked if it didn't exist in it the exist US. It does exist in America. Thank God, because I was like, oh God, what if I made a reference nobody gets? I'm gonna feel like an. <laughs> I'm I'm still focused on starboard port. Yeah. <laughs> Same. So yeah, you basically went. It's on the left right side. Exactly. That, <laughs> Look, sailing is not my skill set, okay? <laughs> Yet, I somehow run countless pirate games. You'd think I'd learn. Well, you're, <laughs> you're trusting your players to know how to sail. Yeah. yeah uh, Which, I do know a little bit about <laughs> sailing. <laughs> Same. Look, I'm about the aesthetic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that good old pirate. I'm sorry, we're not that kind of pirate. Yeah. Um. <laughs> being shirtless standing on uh, near the wheel and just going aha <laughs> according to Bardic. No, I mean it worked for me. I mean is that not what I'm, being a pirate I mean, I'm not is all knocking about? it in any way. Okay, so Lilith, you anyway. do see something, you know, just a couple hundred meters away. It would it would be really quite easy to miss. Um if you weren't paying attention it might look like a small rock formation or something. But Looking closer, you definitely see there is actually um, a quite clearly, like, obvious carved out, uh, and, like, it, it's a specific symbol, uh, and it kind of resembles the shape of a whale. Uh, this is quite small, you know, no bigger than, you know, like, uh, no bigger than, like, a small cat. So it's like a small well that seems to be carved out of metal, and it, it's got like a a, a somewhat ornate uh, water spout coming out of it that seems to be made out of like a jewel or a, a, a crystal or something. And that seems to be uh -huh. sticking out of the water ever so slightly on what appears to look like a small rock formation, if you didn't know any better. Yeah, well that's Just... not natural. That, 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 that looks like it could be a temple. Yeah, from, like, wherever Lilith was just looking out, she just shouts, I think I found it. Although, now I'm wondering, would this ship even have any lifeboats? I mean, the, the, the person who we took this boat from wouldn't be that stupid to not include lifeboats, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we managed to take ship was full of guards I'm not putting intelligence very high on his list <laughs> I mean, well I, it's, it's either we find a lifeboat or we swim I think Reno's already started swimming <laughs> Reno just <laughs> leapt into the water so Reno You've jumped into the water. Are you using the, the anchor, uh, the anchor chain to like guide yourself down, or at least give you a, a vague point, reference point? Are you just like, nope, looking around, swimming. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, you don't really need to roll observation because almost immediately, whilst yes, the the, the top of this thing looks like it's maybe like uh, 100, 200 meters away. Uh, this temple's huge. In fact, like. The boat is basically on top of it. And that is how you fish something out so easily. Uh, it just looks like it spreads quite far. So, like, you are, like, almost directly above. Uh, it, it, it's slightly far down. Uh, I don't know how far we'll say. A distance deep. Uh, a fathom. How deep is a fathom? Uh... <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, but yeah, you can you can see it, and you can see um, you know like uh, uh, like two uh, rows of pillars, uh, like holding up like uh, a, creating like a, an entrance tunnel into this temple, and then that kind of like stretches out, and you know you can see the the building go up, and clearly that is where the the thing above the water can be seen. So you can all just jump on down and go and explore this temple. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, once Lilith realizes that people are already going off to jump, she just d tells Braco like, "Well, time to get time to explore the temple, temple," and then just goes off to jump, jump into the water after people. <laughs> okay. Sorry, brain brain doesn't want to make words right right now, so you just get my jumbled up sentences. Words are overrated. We'll be fine. <laughs> okay. Thanks for dealing with me and brain not wanting to make words. Yeah, Good. We fine. don't wanna. And uh, Malcolm, what are you? What are you doing? You you have watched two crewmates jump overboard. <laughs> Match. You here? Uh, oh. oh, I just had a bunch of things and I was muted. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I sigh heavily uh, and then grab Raiko's arm and take them to the edge of the ship and uh, say, you ready? Oh, um, oh, 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 oh. That was rhetorical. I pushed them into the water. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Lilith, Lilith, I assume it's only like a, a, a while away, but when she sees Rako game plus, she just went back like, oh shit! Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Coupon all pop their head down from the the top deck. And like, oh, all right, cool. I guess I'll I'll stay here and keep guard. I guess Coupo, don't die. Uh, you you got this. I believe in you. And they then very clearly. I have no say in the matter of me not dying. Coupon's <laughs> yeah. uh, jumped into the curve, water. And then very clearly go and return to their nap. Uh, so, alright, you're all in the water. You can all clearly make out. Um, now, I wanna, I'm wanna. i gonna try my best and describe this. So, uh, almost immediately below you, you see a like solid stone slab. And you can see underneath that, there are columns. Um, uh, pillars, I guess, that are holding it up, and below that is like another stone slab in between the the, the pillars, and that seems to be like some kind of entrance way into a quite large. Um... Yeah, it like, just there's two large stone doors that seem like sealed shut. Uh, if you look around, you can't really see any windows or other ways to get in that make any obvious sign or like any. There's no obvious other entryways aside from these two large sealed stone doors. Um, I'm not gonna have you roll swim uh, just now because otherwise, you know, every time you want to do something like ooh, roll swim, uh, that that might get a bit much. Uh, so we'll save that for when you actually like need to roll it for specific reasons. So you can just go and approach these doors however you so choose. Assuming you do. Hey, I approach them with alacrity. Mm -hmm. With what? <laughs> so I approach them with alacrity. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, two doors sealed shut. Um, there, there's quite an obvious like seam in the in between the two of them. Uh, how they, they look quite large. Now these are easily. Uh, 15, 15 feet high and each door is about 5 foot wide so it's a big entryway it's big, impressive, it's clearly very temple, we built something because we can and we, we're we impressive what would you like to try and do? And this is for anybody. I assume you all swim up to the doors. Raiko comes along with you. Mm -hmm. uh, Raiko is the one hand covering their mouth and nose because they were not expecting to be thrown in. They're a little bit thrown off, like, oh, God, what do we do? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, uh, what? Other hand clinging onto Tom Tom. Uh, what? Could we make any roll to see how we would be able to enter this temple um okay so you are looking at these doors 
So if you are actually taking the time and you're like, hmm, we want to try and figure out how this works. What is the... Like, you, you can just, like, try and force them open, uh, you know, by, like, punching them or grabbing them and pulling them or shoulder charging into them. You can do any of that stuff. If you actually want to stand and study them and try to figure it out, uh, that would be a systems check. Ah... Uh... I got a few points in doubt, so I might try that. Okay. Just Lilith, just very stoically, just looking at everything, hand on, hand on her chin. Like, <laughs> Reno is getting a little more panicked. <laughs> <laughs> it is uh, preparing to make a goblin bomb. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so looking at these two doors... Um, uh, on either side, you know, there, there's the, the, the pillars uh, that kind of come down uh, and they create like a nice little, uh, you know, just, they're, they're quite decorative. But the last two pillars seem to have two large, uh, like, vases, vases, urns, we'll say urns, uh, two large urns. And they seem to be related to... The 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 blah, 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 blah. the the doors. There. And if you're looking oh, cool. at them and going, okay, so there's these vases, urns, vases, liquid holding utensil. And if you're studying it, logically, <laughs> you would go, okay. Now before this sank, one would assume there was some kind of system in place where you would put water in the urns or remove water from the urns to open or close the doors. However, you are underwater. <laughs> the, whatever that system was maybe doesn't work so great. There mm. is also, however, um, right in the center of the two doors uh there is a small uh recess that is vaguely uh, not vaguely in the same shape of like uh, a small ornate stone fish carving thing hmm. interesting uh who had it was reno that had the uh, fish carving right yeah uh. I assume as long as she didn't eat it. Yeah. <laughs> it's through Reno's mouth. <laughs> uh, Lilith will go over to Reno and dress her to the stone and then dress her to the little recess, like, D put put in there. <laughs> Take out of mouth, put there. <laughs> Please do not, do not swallow it. Spit out, put there. <laughs> <laughs> Reno will, like, take it out of her mouth and pull it back like she's afraid that it's going to be taken away from her and then realizes what you're saying and <laughs> puts it in the slot. <laughs> okay. So as you do this, you see um, the doors, uh, like these wonderful, ornate, beautiful carvings on them start to light up and this passes on to the, the pillars and that continues and goes to the urns. And you see what happens is these urns, they look as if uh, they start to water seems to like start to push out the top of them and you notice the doors start to slide apart ever so slightly um can you all roll me let me just see what the best thing to roll is I, i'm leaning towards swimming for a thing that's about to happen just check if there's anything better uh no it wouldn't be that uh, Can I roll in athletics? That is athletics. Athletics would probably work as well. Okay. So either athletics or swimming? Yeah. Because what is happening, well, what is about to happen is as these doors start to open, you feel like a big whoosh of water. Uh, it's almost as if water has been trapped behind these doors for a very long time and you have just opened up like a, a floodgate. Mmm. I'm going to go with just rolling swimming because I got no points in athletics. Okay. 
So, uh, uh, are they the, the rolls we've all just done there, the, the 9, 13, 10? Or are they old rolls? I'm, I'm, I'm all, all, all over the place. I don't know. I'm Nine sorry, say that first. again. My brain didn't grok. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, the rolls that basically are currently there, what like, the rolls were. Are they the ones we've just rolled? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. 9, 13, 10. Okay, so 9, 13, 10. These are all uh, moderate. Uh, yeah. Oh, these are all challenging. Okay, so the 9 is a moderate, uh, the 13 is a challenging, and the 10 is a moderate. Yeah, that is good enough, I reckon, for you to not be immediately pushed back. Uh, I should also Yay. roll for Raiko quickly. Uh, Raiko rolled an 11 on the die. We got a 6 and a 5. So Raiko somehow um, just kind of like stands there and tanks it. He goes, mm. Raiko strong! Um, Raiko powerful! You, you do definitely start to notice very quickly that these doors can't open fully. Um, probably something to do with, you know, being submerged underwater doesn't help. So, you know, you should probably very quickly start to zoom forward. Otherwise, they might close, and uh, you don't know if it'll work again. <laughs> uh, I will zoom forward. Yeah. Everybody just zooms forward. Hmm. Like, yep, it's, yep, door's open, time to go. So, you, you all very rapidly uh, swim forward. Uh, what you do start to notice is as you are going, the doors, they kind of, I assume we've all seen like when an automatic door gets blocked by something, it kind of like goes, uh, I don't know what's going on, and then it starts to close again. Yeah, it like shutters, and then, at least for like some of um, the doors I've seen, like they'll just go back very slowly while making like a bamp, bamp, bamp sound. Yeah, that, that's basically what's happening here. Um, and so you all just fly straight in through the door. You don't... Uh, do, you, do you stop and do anything along the way? Uh, like, mm. grab, grab the stone? <laughs> oh, yeah, I grab the stone. Stone's mine. Yeah. I'm keeping that stone. So you, so you <laughs> grab that and you get inside. Uh, what happens is as the doors oof, close... Um, Miraculously, uh, the, this room, because you just open the door as such, and you do notice that the this door is like watertight, so nothing can get in or out, and you do notice that opening the doors has drained most of the water that had been trapped in here, so uh, it now only comes up to about your knees in this room, so you can stand and walk and breathe, and all of that jazz. Uh, this room is very classical, uh, you know, Temple of Yevon aesthetic. So you see some uh, statues of uh, previous High Summoners, and this clearly, there's only two uh, that you can really make out. There's not, uh, there's not as many as you will have seen in other temples. Uh, you can see, like, um, choir stands, essentially, like, kind of just stack up in, like, a, a circular pattern, and so that's clearly where people would have come to sing the hymn of the faith and then you can see a set of stairs that go up uh, they seem to lead up into something and then you can see uh, one room off to the left and one room off to the right uh, on the floor there is also a you know a, a mosaic a carving a mural of what basically looks to be like a very magnificent looking whale. And not magnificent because, ooh, it, it just looks kind of fancy. Like, no, it's designed to look ethereal and powerful and magical. Basically. Mm. <clears throat> can I roll lower everything? Yes, yes you can, if you so wish. <laughs> the most useful of skills. <laughs> I'm sorry if, like, there's a lot of background noise on my end. I have no idea what's going on outside. Ah, uh, I honestly haven't heard anything yet. Oh, okay. I just keep hearing loud bangs, like, of people slamming doors and such. Okay. I can't hear anything. 
So that eleven for law everything. Um So this is a temple. Um you, you you probably read a book at some point, or you know uh watched a, a sphere, uh or you did something where you know actually yeah, you know what? You read you, you watched a sphere. Uh which spheres are basically like movies and little visual messages and things like that and mm -hmm. I, I like the idea that you know there's like a a really <laughs> cliched you know like history channel documentary on the world's missing aeons and it, it's really mm -hmm. dramatic and has this over top voice <laughs> you know, what if like, aliens did aeons <laughs> yeah you know that that was a very common theory about you know like uh aliens uh, from other worlds came and they started all the, the things. You know, some of the, the natural things, you know, like uh, they were questioning like if the, the, the ruins of Zanakin were made by aliens. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, all all good stuff do. like that. <laughs> and in there, <laughs> one of the, <clears throat> the proposed uh, missing aeons uh, was that of a a large uh, whale? Uh, let me see if I can get a brief description. Uh, why did I make all my notes? Yeah. Okay. So um, that's not much of a note. Where's where's the notes? Hello, dogs. Okay. So yeah, there's um uh, okay, yeah, so uh there there's stories and you know, people have found like uh like oratory, word of mouth stories about what essentially like a kind-hearted, benevolent uh, protector of the seas. Um, mm -hmm. Not... The, a more common one is that of Leviathan, who's like the, the master of the seas and kind of dangerous and scary. Mm -hmm. um, this one isn't that. Not by a long mark. Uh, this... Uh, one of uh, the rumoured names is Bismarck. And, mm. uh, they're, they're known to be... Uh, the, they're known to like uh, protect sailors and fishermen, and um, the, there's been like some historical uh, records of uh, Bismarck foreseeing great tragedies and protecting people from them. Mm -hmm. So, like foreseeing looming disasters on the horizon. And, uh, it, you know, just a, a real nice whale. <laughs> opposed to Sky Whale. Yeah, opposed to a not nice whale. There are a lot of whales in this world. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Um, so I, I will, uh, communicate that to the rest of the team. Um, and ask Raiko if, uh, they want to... Go through the trial. Narwhal, narwhal. <laughs> I've now got my narwhal song in my head. Thank narwhals, you. narwhals, swimming through the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> what if I was going to do it? Somebody else would have. And um, so, yeah, you you asked Raiko if I wanted to do a trial, right? Uh, I, yes. I, I was laughing at narwhals, and Raiko's. Um, yeah, I, I, I think we should. I think we could do the trial. I think that'd be really good. I think that'd be. Um, it can't hurt. You know, if no, I, I can't imagine anybody else is coming and finding us out. Maybe that'll make us more special and impressive. Um, and 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 you know, maybe 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 this whale is the one that can help eradicate sin for the rest of time. Maybe. Maybe. It's I mean, certainly it a chance that one whale could. Take out another whale. Yeah. So. Plus, uh, plus, you know, if we took the time to come here, we might as well 
at least try to see if this this mark will help us. Okay. So, uh, yeah, let's. Uh, I'm going to logically assume that you know we go up those stairs there, and that will lead us to a trial. You know, because it has the whole door that says trial this way and a nice little sign. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, yes. I, I, I'm now making this like, in my head is now like a, a tourist trap a tra- a ta- a attraction, you know, like uh, an aquarium. <laughs> so it's got like a whale with an Get arrow. shot this way. Oh my god, why have I created that image in my mind? Why? I get to, I get to keep the stone though, right? Um, you, sure. Why not? <laughs> I Well, technically, if you... If Bismarck ends up coming with us, that means that nobody will really can't really come here anyway. Well, I mean, this place does look pretty. I don't know. I say just, I guess, keep the stone. I don't know. I just work here. <laughs> okay. So, do you want to go straight to the trials, or do you want to have a look at either of the other two rooms? We can look at the other two rooms. I mean, they might have stuff. <laughs> they might have might stuff. Have stuff. Hmm. I'm fine with that. All right. So, uh, you want to go to the left or the right first? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna roll dice real quick to determine what way I want to go. The left. Okay. So my vote. you go into the left-hand room, and uh, it resembles a gift shop. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm now leaning into this aesthetic, just because I think that makes it even more hilarious. Oh, yeah. It's like some scary, rumored thing that the aliens did, and there's just a gift shop. <laughs> so, you know, there's like uh, little plastic uh, figures of whales, and, you know, there's like a giant squid and a shark. And, you know, just think of like really kitschy uh, aquarium. That is the aesthetic. You know, there, there's uh, there's a really cartoonish uh, whale. Uh, a really cartoonish shark. No, no, not a shark, sorry. A really cartoonish, um, like, octopus type creature that has, like, an eye patch and looks kind of <laughs> like a pirate. Uh, like, displayed on the walls. Um... Obviously, there is nobody in here. Uh, it, it is empty and devoid of life. Um, because this room was sealed off, so even when this like, sank, this room couldn't get filled. So you're safe, there's nothing in here. Uh, but there's no people and no fish or anything that I have got in here. Um, you, you, you see a few things kicking around, so you know there'll be like... Um, potions and and a few bits and bobs like that which didn't get smashed and knocked over like uh so um, um, they weren't trying hard enough pardon <laughs> they weren't trying hard enough <laughs> <laughs> they were not um if anybody wanted to uh and if anybody can you could also roll me a scavenge check to see if you find anything uh, of particular I want, interest. I had an idea, so I want to try to find a thing. But first, depending on how good I roll, uh, oh, and depending on if I can actually type down the thing right, Lilith is going to try to find the coolest so, sort of like merchandise that would be in this gift shop mm-hmm. for me. Uh, what did I do? Oh god. I know I had like a whole thing somewhere of scavengeable items. I don't know what I did with it. It's not that. Uh, is it in there? <clears throat> uh-huh, no, it'll be in here. Nope, no, it won't be. Ah! Aha, <laughs> uh-huh, there it is. It's in the reward 
God's tab. I knew it was somewhere. Okay. Ah. So, uh, let me go back and look on roll 20. So, the the seven, that's your scavenge, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, let's... Let's have a lucky loo. Uh, shoop doop doop doop. Okay, so one... Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Yeah, oh God. Uh, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Uh, roll me. A 1d28, because we, we can... Okay. I mean, this is not a mechanical thing. This is me making shit up on the fly. 28. 10. So, 10. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so the nicest looking thing you find is you find a really beautifully ornate crafted uh, glass whale. Like, it, it, it looks like it's been... Okay, I know this is a thing in Britain. I don't know if it's a thing in the States. Uh, you know, like uh, seaside towns, beach towns? Um, a really common thing in this country. They've got like lots of nice artisan stuff because they're like tourist traps. Um, mm. But one thing which I found a lot more is they, there's usually like uh, glass blow, like blown glass uh, workshops and mm. stores, and so mm -hmm. it's like that. It's this really beautiful blown glass, like handcrafted. It's got like uh, like different colors of glass that've been blown into it to form the shape of this whale. Um, it's quite small. It's about you know it could fit easily in your hands. Uh, without taking up too much time, like, room. Like, it, it's it comfortably in, like, both hands. Like, so. Uh, it looks real pretty. And it does seem to have, like, a an aura of... Um, an aura of mysticism about it. Like, it might... It might not be magic, but you could probably use it to do something magical based if you learned or knew how to take the properties of one thing and incorporate them into another for example hmm. could a lore magic help in maybe trying to figure out what it does you know, or... um, it's not this like this thing doesn't do anything it's oh, more, okay it has the potential to allow something else to do something. Uh, okay. I think <clears throat> after finding it, Lilith will just look around very quickly and then try her best to just wrap it up and and store it away in a way that it won't shatter. Yeah, you can... You know what? There's a roll of bubble wrap because it's a gift shop. You can know, <laughs> bubble wrap. You can get that. You can roll it up. You can put it in a bag. You can put that bag in another bag and you can put that bag in like a little cardboard box which has got uh, polystyrene around it uh, <laughs> you can keep this thing super safe yeah that actually does exactly what Lilith does and she also ties a little bow onto the box and then puts it away in her little adventure satchel thing yeah. okay so that's what you found in this room um, as well if you want you can add a uh, yeah, uh, like two potions and a phoenix down. So to explain how they work in this game, uh, you know, items don't exist. Uh, you have to like make them. So there's not like a potion does this. Uh, so uh, where's the uh, property list? Yeah. So basically, what you have is you have. Um, 
two uh, consumable items of HP restore and one of oh god what's it called uh shoot doop shoot doop i think it's just like revive or something i think it's revivify because i know i ended up using a lot of the starting chill to buy items and one of the things was a revivify yeah i'm i'm, I'm just looking you, you, you know you'd think I'd be smart and have yep. learned all, all this stuff beforehand, but you make a great many assumptions <laughs> about me. <laughs> oh, I think it might actually be status heal, and the status being unconscious. So let me uh, just okay. let me just double check. Um, okay, nope, it's not that. Uh, resurrection. That's oh, it. okay. Yeah, so you find one consumable item of uh, resurrection, two of HP restore. Okay. I think first Lilith would talk to everybody else, like, to see if they, if anyone needs the potions more than her, if anyone wants to hold on to the phoenix down. <clears throat> and if not, then she will take whatever nobody else wants. I'm good. You found them. They're yours. All right, then. But also, also feel free to holler if if you have any need of them. And she'll just store those away as well. Okay. So you've got them. Uh, that that's basically this room. Done. There's not much else going on in here. Uh, do you, you want to check out the other room or just head into the, the actual trials? Check out the other room. Yeah. Uh, if you look at yeah. the other room, uh, this is, it, it kind of looks like a restaurant. Because it's like an aquarium and restaurant. So it's got like a little thing. And there's nothing like immediately, obviously, there's a small kitchen. You can go and look in the kitchen. Um, any of the food that wasn't kept in preserves, which is basically all of it, uh, that's useless. It's been here a while. However, there is a small freezer. Uh, if you look in the freezer, you will find um, you'll find some very well preserved uh, food. Uh, you will see uh, that one of them, well, one of the fish, is the way it's been preserved. It looks as if it has like uh, tape or something over its mouth. Uh, so that looks like it'll maybe have something to do with uh, being silenced or sealed in, in this game. And you will also find a, a slightly rainbow glowing fish that has been preserved in here. And that seems to give off like a... that looks like it's quite sturdy and protected from stuff. So um, if anybody wanted to do a lore check, I guess. Uh, I. Uh, or maybe nature would probably tell you what these are. Do a nature check. Yeah, let's do that. I would just be rolling 2d6, so... 8. Okay, okay so 8. That's pretty good. Uh, these, are, these are quite common fish. Uh, these are, like, food uh, items. So that basically the same as consumables, except ever so slightly <clears throat> different. Uh, one of these food items, um, uh, what's the name of the spell? I think the spell is called Vox, which basically uh, removes silence. It might do more, I just need to double check. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, yeah, Vox. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, so uh, what Vox does, uh, so it's a fish where if you eat it, it can remove the, uh, the, uh, the effects seal and curse, because they're very useful, they, you know, it's like, okay, I'm safe from my magic not working. And the other one is, uh, oh my god, no, I lied, I lied. 
It's not a fish, it's a crab. It, it is a crab, and it is a shell fish. You can consume it to have to activate the spell shell. Mm -hmm. So that means uh, that it basically halves any damage you take from magic. Uh, for an amount of time. So you've got a voxfish and a shellfish. I'm I'm assuming the laughter was from what I posted into Twitch chat. <laughs> yep. Well, you know what the the cramp? It, it's like a, a bright reddish color, and it seems to be holding like a, a small uh, conductor's baton. This crab concerns me. <laughs> <laughs> In the distance, to just the faint melody of crabby, 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 crab, crab, crab. <laughs> oh dear. So these are these two rooms done, and uh, with that, I assume you head on up and you want to go and check out the um, the actual trials. Sure. Yeah. Alrighty. Um. So you get up. There's a. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I can't believe I've lent into this aesthetic of it just being like an aquarium. So you know, there's uh, there's uh, the little cartoon whale. Uh, using its uh, fin to give like a thumbs up and a little uh, little speech bubble uh, saying uh, you must be this well trained of a summoner to go beyond this part point <laughs> it's got like a little marker and it's like, it, it doesn't make any sense it's like, how, how do you measure how trained in a summoner you must be but okay <laughs> Riko do you yeah. understand this esotericism <laughs> uh, um, I, I can't know but, I mean, who's going to stop us? Uh, I... Fuck the rules. Uh... <laughs> okay, first of all, young person. <laughs> I've been a good influence on you. Sorry, um, disregard the establishment. Alright, that works for me. Yeah, that, that works. That's better. And uh, Raiko will take a step forward. And um, you, as it as they do some, you you the door just kind of like slides on up Star Trek door style just swoop, and you can uh, walk through into a corridor. I'm gonna skip through. Yeah. Um. All right. <clears throat> now uh, we're about halfway through where the session is. Uh, do people feel like they want or need a break? Or would people, like, you know, to get a drink or go to a bathroom or whatever, or do mm. people want to, like, just, uh, chug on? I think I would actually want to go, uh, just get some water real quick, but, but if it's just me going off to do that, then it's fine. I should probably grab some carbs. Yeah. So, quick, uh, five to ten minute break. I'll be back sure. real soon. All right. So, with that... Uh, we'll be back real soon, everybody. Thank you for sticking with us. Uh, I'm going to throw it over to the screen, and we'll see you real soon. We are <laughs> we are back. So, where we ended is you have entered the Cloister of Trials. Uh, so, immediately you find yourselves in a, a corridor. Uh, uh, there doesn't a appear to be anything, like, super obvious... Uh, right off the get-go, it, it, it kind of goes forward, then there's a dead end, and on the wall uh, is like a, a glowing glyph. Um, you do notice to the left-hand side, uh, when you walk in, there is a, a, a small pedestal, and on the pedestal there is like a bowl, uh, like a small dish, uh, that seems to have... Uh, <laughs> that is where there is um, another... Uh, um, like fish stone sphere thing it just kind of sits in there and uh, the pedestal has a a slight turquoise glow to it he squint at it suspiciously as, as you do <laughs> hmm 
<laughs> the, the pedestal that does not react to your squinting. <laughs> uh, do you know what we should do, Reiko? I squint with alacrity. <laughs> Raiko kind of looks at us, um, well, in my experience, and I mean, I've never actually done a cloister of trials, and, but usually there's a, a series of, like, puzzles, um, usually to do with, like, spheres and glyphs and such, so um, I would assume that we either need to interact with the pedestal in some way, or the, the obvious glowing glyph at the end of the, the hallway. I'm going to walk up to the pedestal. Mm -hmm. And lick it. <laughs> it. It is cold. It is ice cold. Very chilly. Um, it it also tastes like salt water. Mm -hmm. Do you still have that whale? What whale? The one the one you took from the front doors. The fish? The yeah, the fish. Sorry, the fish. Yeah. Fish. Uh sorry, <laughs> is this a is there is there a fish stone here or is it a gap here? Uh that is a fish stone in the pedestal. Like, sorry, there's like uh there's like a little bowl basket thing. You know, kinda of like um <laughs> Kind of like in lots of people's homes, how they'll have like a small mm -hmm. bowl where you put like your keys or whatever. It's like that, and it's got uh, a fish stone. It's a key bowl. It. Yeah. All right. Uh, I will. I will pick up the fish from the fish bowl. Yep. Uh, you do so. It stops glowing turquoise, and you have a, a fish sphere stone thing, um, and the pedestal stops glowing turquoise. Does anything happen to the glyph on the wall, or...? <clears throat> I mean, that's at the, the far end of the hallway, uh, and you have not interacted with it. Uh, nope. It is as it was. Oh. Can I put my fish in the pedestal? <laughs> uh, the pedestal glows turquoise and looks exactly the same as it did before the other one got taken out of it. I take my fish back out and I walk towards the cliff. <laughs> yeah. Lilith also walks walks towards the glyph and yeah. sort of just like <clears throat> like just does the little like shave and a haircut knock on it so you take yours back out the pedestal stops glowing turquoise and you walk towards the glyph uh it, it's just like a small glowing glyph on on the wall uh it, it's kind of it kind of has like a, a little uh, circle around it and in the middle of the circle there's a, a whale and then it, it seems to glow uh almost like beckoning you to touch or interact or lick it or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I can't pass up that invitation. I lick the glyph. <laughs> it's really weird how all of these cloister of trials require us to lick the glyphs. <clears throat> they know me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so you, you lick the glyph. Oh, God. I, I need to be careful with uh, my pronunciation and my elocution, otherwise that's going to sound really dirty <laughs> at some point. So, you lick the glyph, and um, as you do so, the glyph kind of go. It makes like a, a warm sound effect, and as it does so, uh, on the wall to your right hand side, um, a, a small recess uh, appears, and it is in the shape of one of these little whale stone things. And uh, you, the wall itself <coughs> seems to... The wall seems to, like, undulate slightly, as if it's not quite solid. Malcolm, put your whale in there. Uh, I stick my whale in the hole. Yep, as you do so. The wall, like this small section of wall, uh, just turns into water and splooshes down. It disappears, uh, revealing a staircase leading down. No, I lie, leading up. Um, is that so what I'm, what what I'm hearing is this, this session is just going to be pure innuendo. <laughs> uh, 
Don't play. This this session? Th this game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I suppose we need to go up then. Yeah. See if you can take your whale back. We can have two. I, I take the whale back. Well, the, the whale turned into water and splooshed on the floor with the rest of the whale. No! We've lost... We lost the whale. We only have one whale now. It's my whale. I mean, that's one more whale than you technically should have. <laughs> you, you... <laughs> we have broken the game. <clears throat> Just a sudden flash of light appears and it says, Map broken. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, you, you, you head up the stairs? Yep. Uh, yes. All right. Uh, you, as you head up the stairs, uh, you'll find yourselves in a circular room with um, one room, uh, it appears to be a clock face. Uh, the, the staircase uh, comes up in the center of the room. Uh, there's one room at 12 o'clock, uh, one room at th uh, 3, one at 6, and one at 9. So, uh, compass points. <clears throat> um, the the rooms at uh, three and nine are closed behind doors. Uh, the rooms at twelve and six are open, and you can head in those directions. Okay. So, do we all want to go into one of the rooms, or like two go that way, and then the other two go the other way? Yeah. No. The clear answer is we should split up. <laughs> mm. I mean, possibly that might be how we. No, 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 no! I'm, I'm fully serious. I'm, oh. I'm right there with you. Oh, okay. So, who wants to go where? Um. <laughs> um. I love that you all are used to me being the reckless answer that you, you pause for a minute. Do you? <laughs> Which, uh, which, 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 can you remind me which directions the doors are that are open? Uh, 12 and 6. Okay. And we came from which direction? Uh, you came from Down. bang in the center. Like, if this is uh, like a oh, okay. staircase came into the center. I um, see. I should have also described that there are, uh, there are like four, like in a little square around the circle which you entered through, uh, there are like four uh, squares, uh, like which are slightly grooved into the floor, like maybe something slots in here, probably, maybe. But that's something to, to look for. Oh. I'm gonna go six. Okay. Uh, uh, Reiko, would you rather go with Lilith or me? Well, I, I don't want to be rude because I, you know, I obviously. Oh. Okay, I go with Reno. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. I don't think that wasn't even an option. <laughs> well, I not that I don't trust Reno, but uh, we Lilith <laughs> and I have been more protecting Rikos since we've been traveling. <laughs> <laughs> Lilith, uh, Lilith. Uh, Reno doesn't know what safe means. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so while we're tra traveling together, I will teach you the meaning of safe words. <laughs> Why would I need safe I... words? I have a goblin bomb. You make a fair point. <laughs> I mean, it's always good to have safe words, but I don't know how it would light to solving this trial right now. Explosions speak louder than words. Raiko, That's any there. Kind of, any level of innuendo or anything is going slightly over Raiko's head and Raiko's like, um, so a, a safe words, like, are they just words that make you feel good? So, you know, like, hug? Hug's a safe word. Uh, friend is a safe word. And, um, don't worry, Reiko. Our safe word is avocado. You got it. Hold in one, buddy. Okay. <laughs> okay, very well. The safe word is avocado. So if you find yourself in trouble, yell avocado and we'll come save you. Okay. Now I want avocados. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, yeah, does anyone have a hankering for some guac? <laughs> okay. I, w I wonder, would, would this would this ship have guacamole? Um, what kind of food would be on the ship? Ooh, we can get salted ship. chips. There's salt everywhere. <laughs> Alrighty. So, uh, <laughs> I, I, I just don't know how to respond to this stuff. I, I, I'm here going, uh, uh, I, I, I'm loving it. I live for it. I, I, my brain is just not processing responses. Sorry. <laughs> I, it's fine. All right. How do fantasy work? <laughs> so, Raiko and Lilith, you're going to 12 o'clock. Uh, Reno and um, them. Malcolm, you're heading to 6. Um, anyone have a preference which one will you do first? Not really. Nope. Uh, okay, if, the wall, if the wall goes semi-solid again, I want to lick it just to see if it tastes like saltwater taffy. Okay. Uh. Okay, so uh, let's start with uh, Reno and Malcolm. So you head through the door, and this leads... Uh, it kind of opens out into, like... Uh, I can't think of a shape name. Cause it, it's not like a... a a regular shape it just kind of opens out into like uh, an imperfect triangle-esque alcove and you you walk into this room and you see there is a pedestal uh, at one side and at the other you see um, uh, embedded into the wall a, a glowing purple sphere mm. I pick up the sphere. Mm -hmm. uh, as you pull the sphere out, uh, uh, there's like a, a, a glowing purple aura, a glyph behind it. If you do that, it disappears. Uh, the wall is still there. This is just like a, a small alcove to put this in. You are now holding the sphere. I lick the sphere. <laughs> uh, the sphere tastes like destruction. Perfect. <laughs> uh, I put the sphere in the other alcove. Uh, in in the pedestal? In the, yeah, in the pedestal. Yep. Uh, the pedestal gets like a small uh, purple glyph above it. Uh, this pedestal, like, you could probably shove this pedestal around if you so chose. I'm going to shove it down the hallway to put it in one of the squares. Yeah. Uh, which square? Uh... Uh, as we're coming out, it'll be the one to the left. Yep, okay, so you go and you put that in there, and it, it locks into place, it goes like, chick, chuck, and nothing seems to happen. It's still glowing purple, with the destructive spirit in there, but you, you, you've you covered this area for now. Meanwhile, in the, uh, in the 12 o'clock room, a uh, similar kind of setup except um, the pedestal uh, seems to be covered by it, there seems to be like a waterfall coming down from the, the roof blocking the pedestal so you can't actually get access to it and on the then there is uh, what is that there is um, yeah there, there's like a small alcove and that has uh, one of these fish uh, spheres in it, and that seems to like have like a thin turquoise line leading up to the ceiling where the waterfall is coming from. So ATB isn't here. <laughs> oh, is ATP ATB has disappeared? Okay, fully. <laughs> Darn it! This is why I should read stuff. Um, so Raiko's gonna stand there awkwardly and kind of like just tap their fingers and go um. I, mean, I think this seems really quite obvious, so I'm. Um, I, I, I think I'll. I'll. I'll, I'll like, I, I could take initiative, but I feel like that would, you know, take away from the the individual. Like, it'll take away from Lilith's uh, free agency. So I'm. I'm, I'm going to stand here and fill time whilst I wait for uh, Lilith to come out of deep thought, uh, that she is clearly in. Um, do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, we're out there like, where are they? <laughs> Did you hear avocado? I didn't hear avocado. <laughs> yeah, I didn't hear avocado. Um, 
what you did notice, it, it's not like a huge thing, but when you clicked the um, the pedestal into place, um, out of the if you if you look closer at the pedestal, out of the the top of it, there is like a small nozzle, or like a small opening of sorts. Um, so, you know, you assume if you put a different sphere in, something different would happen. Mm. Okay, uh, ATB is back. Aha! Now we go. Yeah. Hi. Yeah, sorry, sorry, I hadn't realized I'm... it stepped away. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I'll just describe what the room is you step into. It's kind of like <clears throat> similar to the other side, so it's like a little alcove. Um, you see a pedestal. The pedestal is under a waterfall, uh, so you can't go and get access to the pedestal itself. Um, however, uh, there's a small uh, recess in the wall off to the side that has a, a sphere, a fish sphere in it, and that has a turquoise line leading up over to the pedestal. Hmm. Okay. Also, we licked the other sphere and it tastes like destruction. <laughs> uh, okay, so where did you say the sphere was? Like, uh, It's in like a, a small recess, like just sticking out of a wall. You know, like a small cool. little thing. Uh, I love if it's going to go over and try to remove the... Yeah, Spear? you take that out, the, the blue line uh, disappears, and the water that is cascading down from above the ceiling stops, and you see the pedestal. The pedestal also has a small fish sphere in it. Okay. Uh, a little if we'll look over to Raiko and be like, D do you want to take the fish spear? Because I'm not sure if we... I think we would need that, but also I'm not sure if we need to put this in the pedestal or not. And she gestures to the sphere in her hands. Um, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take it. So Raiko takes the sphere, holds it, and uh, kind of looks and goes, um, should we push the pedestal? I saw that there was all those uh, like grooves out in the main room, so we could go and push it through there and see if it fits. Um, I, I think that would make sense. Yeah, it would make sense. And so Raiko, uh, Raiko tries to push it, but Raiko just doesn't have much physical strength. And, you know, it's kind of funny. Like the floor is kind of slippery because there's been like a waterfall over this for however many decades, centuries. So it's very wet. And Raiko kind of pushing it, uh, slips and just kind of, uh, oh no. Uh, uh, Lilith will come over and and uh, offer a hand so Raiko can can like. Uh, back up from the ground yeah from uh, slipping Raiko they, they stand themselves up kind of dust off uh, they, they blush a little bit feel very silly and embarrassing just, um, maybe you should do the pushing I'm sure I can do it and she both puts one puts the spear under one arm and then using the other she tries to push the pedestal the pedestal pushes really easily yes almost like there's very little friction underneath because of the amount of water and it just whoop, glides and you can push it through the hallway and back down into the room where you see uh, on the the south side of the temple you say you push your pedestal to the left or the right uh, groove uh, Malcolm and Reno left left mm -hmm. so yeah you see well, the way you're coming it will be on your right hand side uh, you will see that they have already pushed a pedestal into that side uh, there are three possible groups you can pop this pedestal in. So there is, from the direction you are coming, there is the uh, closest right-hand side, the closest left-hand side, and the farthest left-hand side. Uh, or, you know, basically, directly uh, across from where the pedestal is, diagonal from where the other pedestal is, or horizontal to where the other pedestal is. I'm uh, trying real hard to describe this and probably making it so much more complicated than it needs to be. Uh, I think, like, the, 
the right side. So it uh, would be where to where to push. So directly across from it. So they are both covering. Um, they're both. You've got two pedestals uh, leading down the corridor to the room at nine o'clock. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. You you push that into place, and it goes clack Um. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <clears throat> that's uh, that's what's what. You have the two pedestals in place. Uh, Lilith is holding a fish stone. Uh, Raiko is holding a fish stone. Uh, <laughs> Malcolm what is holding... yours taste like? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Raiko licks it and goes, Cold. And salt. Cold but salt. not destruction? No. No. Not even a little angry? No, it tastes like cold salt water. Hmm. Lilith, what does yours taste like? <laughs> Sorry, I'm also eating. I, I ended up getting food. <laughs> I just uh... saw... I asked that question immediately after you muted it. I'm like, oh, okay then. <laughs> Just no. Lilith looks at the stone and very hesitantly just just licks it. But also, she turns away from the group as she does so, <laughs> as um, if to be like, I am not ruining my cold, dark reputation. Yeah. I am the darkness. <laughs> Apparently, you're all Scottish. <laughs> it tastes like cold salt water. How can we get the destructive one? Because uh, uh, we're spicy. I'll go with it. So, so you, you should put one of those in the pedestal. <clears throat> which one? I don't know. Because apparently we have three place. that are just cold salt water, and then the other one that's apparently tastes like if destruction had a taste. <laughs> um, Can I check the other two doors? Uh, yep, they are both still closed. So I feel like this is a puzzle that would allow us to open these other two doors, but also I can make a goblin bomb. How, how about we try to open them first? That, just in case. That's what I'm saying. I can open them with a goblin bomb. Okay, but what is the blast radius of the goblin bomb? Tends to vary. <laughs> <laughs> After hearing that, Lilith just walks over to one of the pedestals and puts one and puts the fish stone in one of them. Yeah, as you do that, um, it, like, essentially from like a, a small, it's not like from an opening, it doesn't like spout out, but it, it looks like from a center of a pedestal, it starts to shoot up like a small fountain and it goes whoosh. And you look up and you notice that it seems to be pressing against uh, something on the ceiling, creating like a, a nice little glowing magical looking circle. Hmm. Uh, I guess Lilith would look to her companions and be like, I think putting the, I think we need to put the others in the remaining pedestals. Reno is on her tippy toes trying to reach the ceiling to lick it. <laughs> uh, how tall are the ceilings? Um, I'm, I'm going to say the ceilings are about, uh, 15 feet high? Mm. Just out of reach. <laughs> I was going to give you a boost to see if you could lick it, but I think that's even out of reach for that. <laughs> I mean, it, it's not... It, I mean, obviously this has to be a pretty powerful little burst of water. I mean, it's only coming from, like, a single pedestal, but, like, 
Mm. Actually, no, you probably couldn't use that to propel yourself up, as fun as that would be. Huh. I mean, push comes to shove, I'm a cat, I can probably climb the wall. <laughs> For a That's second true. there, I thought you were about to say, I can probably climb the water. I'm like, what? <laughs> I was about to say, what? What? Final Fantasy, anything's possible. What kind of cats do, did it's, you see in your life? It's like Minecraft swimming. If there's water, you can swim up it. <laughs> that, that is true. That's how Minecraft swimming works. It, it, it is. That, that is my understanding. So, okay. So you've got the other pedestal still. Um, did you take the destruction sphere out? Or is it still in there? Looking it's still in there. Yeah. So you have, you still have two more fish spheres. Uh, I'll take the destruction sphere out mm -hmm. and gesture at Raiko to put theirs in. Yep. So Raiko will go over, put the fish sphere in. Same thing, little whoosh fountain, and it hits the ceiling and it creates another little magical circle. And this creates uh, two turquoise lines that shoot over to nine o'clock. They go down. And it, the the door, uh, the door turns to water, disappears. You can now go into nine o'clock. I'm, I'm gonna keep the, the break everything sphere. Yep, keep hold of the destruction sphere. <clears throat> <laughs> so I'm guessing that we're gonna need to repeat this process and down this corridor. Probably. Probably, so, yeah. let's go check out this court. I'm going to walk down. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go and look at um, the room at 9 o'clock, same thing, little alcove. Uh, people here are not super creative. Um, you do not see a pedestal. You do, however, see uh, two small alcoves. Uh, one which has another fish sphere in, uh, and that uh, is creating like uh, a little waterfall that kind of goes off the edge of the alcove. Like, cause it, you know, it kind of is, there's like a sheer edge and it kind of like goes whoosh over the side. It's creating a waterfall off somewhere, and the other is empty. Who wants to hold the destructive sphere? Yeah, I'll hold it. I'll hand it over and go over and pluck the other one out from the alcove. Yep. You, you take that out, and uh, the water stops flowing. And with the water, that's, when the water stops flowing, you can see there is a small, thin line that seems to go um, to, and just seems to like end at the, the edge of the, the room, like going off to the, the sheer edge. Hmm. Can you put the destructive sphere in the other alcove? Uh, I do that. Uh, in in the other alcove, which you just which didn't have anything in. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Uh, you go. You, you pop it in. It, it goes purple. Nothing else really happens. Uh, I take it back out. Yep. You take it back out. There's something that tastes like destructive. It's awful stubborn about not destroying things. Put it in the first alcove. Uh, I go to the other alcove and I put it in. Yeah, you, you go, you pop it in, and uh, the thin like line, it goes purple, it goes to the, the edge of the room where the waterfall is going off, and it, it explodes. It goes boom, uh, revealing a, a small treasure chest. I shove the sphere I'm holding back at... Uh... <laughs> Malcolm, and grab the destruction sphere like it's my new best friend. <laughs> uh, okay. <clears throat> and then we should probably check the treasure chest. <laughs> uh, yeah, I open up the treasure chest. Okay. Uh, you open it up, and you uh, there, there's kind of like a a bangle. So like you know, whatever you choose to imagine that as, you know, it's like a, a wrist guard or something. It, it's basically an accessory. And it seems to have a wave-like pattern on it. Uh, in fact, like, it's carved into it. It's got this wonderful, like, ornate set of waves. It's just real pretty looking. And it's kind of got, like, a a, a, a sea 
blue turquoisey coloration to it. Um, can I identify it? Uh, uh, is identify a thing? I I, I assume I guess lore everything lore is my trump card, <laughs> but that could uh, work. Maybe. Yeah, I think uh, lore everything. Lore everything is just going to be our go-to, isn't it? Like, let's do that. Sure, there is. <laughs> Uh, I mean, if anything would work, then it might be lore everything. Oh, I did the wrong dice. <laughs> and it was such a good roll. What did you, what did you roll? Uh, I accidentally rolled 2d4 two two D four. plus 4. <laughs> uh, oh, wait. Even oh, better. Even better. All right, boom. Uh, I see the nature of the universe. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so this, I, th I think this is our first crit. Yes. So you instantly solve the entire puzzle. <laughs> yeah. So you look at this and you go, "Okay, yeah. so this is an accessory. Um, it is nameless until you give it a name because you can name it whatever the heck you want to name it. But basically, uh, when you equip this, it allows you it get it grants you elemental resistance to water as an element. Mm. So nice. You can pop this on. Mm. All water damage, you only take half damage. Um, whoever wants, whoever wields it, whoever gets to equip it, it will change and become whatever they want it to look like because that's how Final Fantasy works. So if you want it to look like a shield, you want it to look like uh, a necklace, you want it to look like a toe ring, it'll change <laughs> and look like that to match your aesthetic. Um, I'm actually going to hand it to Lilith. Lil Lilith takes it and is and basically like a thanks. Well, and I figure you're more likely to be in the line of fire than I am. Fair enough. And she sure sort of just looks around uh, on at herself just to figure out why are they gonna. Dis it's me. me. I'm the fire. <laughs> Lilith just looks around and is like, where am I gonna put this thing? And sort of just fastens it, fastens it onto her wrist. Like, okay, it'll, it'll stay here. I mean, obviously, you don't need to decide right now, but whatever you want this accessory to be, and you get to name it, so you, you just get a water-resistant uh, feature. Mm. Uh, I forgot what they're called. The words escape me. Uh, property. So yeah, boom. You now resist water damage. Yay! All right. So what? You still have the the other pedestal uh, in here, and you still currently have two. Wait. You have two or three. Uh, no, you you ha you have two. Uh, doodars. water. Uh, the fish sphere things, don't you? We have the destruction sphere. We have the one that we picked up in this room. And the one and that I... from a doorway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Did, weren't there two in the one that Lilith went into? Uh, yeah, but you put both of them in the. Two right, pedestals. right, right. Okay. And there's no pedestal in here? Uh, there is no pedestal, no. wonder if there's two pedestals in the other room. Maybe. Is there anything in this room that tells me there might be another secret? <laughs> um, well, the only thing you haven't done yet is put a fish sphere in the, the other recess. Because you took the fish sphere out of the one recess... And try the destruction sphere in both, but you haven't put the fish sphere in the non-destruction recess. That's the Let's only do thing that. Haven't done in here, I think. So yeah, you do that, and then you hear the sound of water gushing. And if you look back through into the room, uh, you notice uh, that the if you were to let's say you're looking at this like it's a clock face from like the center where you were originally, um, you see that. The, the pedestal in the top left corner 
that now has water. Not only is it shooting up like a little fountain from where the pedestal is, there is a waterfall coming down on it from here. Hmm. Mm -mm. So that's what you've done. Curious, yeah, sir, and curious, sir. So maybe if we move a pedestal to the other side and unlock the other door? Maybe, since there isn't really one in this room. Okay, let's go do that. Okay. Mm. So you, you, you leave this room, you go. Um, obviously, there's a waterfall coming down on it, so you can't push, you can't move that pedestal. Uh, however, there is a little glowing uh, point on the floor uh, near the staircase you came to get into here, and you know if you stepped on that, like you you inherently know if you stepped on that, the pedestals would reset. Oh no! Oh no! Don't. Step <laughs> on they'd go back that. to where they came from. So you can move the pedestal that's in the bottom left corner. The top left one you can't move because waterfall is coming down on top of it. Okay, so we're, we're going to try and arrange the pedestals so that there are two flanking the other unopened door. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I, I, I assume you'd probably get to this point quite easily, really. Um, and maybe I'm doing a terrible job of explaining it because I'm I'm mentally trying to translate like uh, a thing from a video game to this because I made this up on the spot. So basically, right, what would happen if you reset the pedestals? They would still have the spheres in them. Uh, the all the glyphs and stuff you've activated would still be active. So the water that's coming down that would still be coming down from uh, room at nine o'clock, but the pedestal would just be back in the room it came from. So you could then move that from wherever and put it somewhere else. Oh, okay. Yeah, I probably so, did a bad job of explaining it. So we can, basically we can ignore the one with the waterfall and put the other three pedestals into their places. There's only two pedestals. Uh, I thought there were three. No, there's two. You're right. Yeah, so that's what we should do. We should reset it. We'll ignore the one with the waterfall, and we'll put the other two pedestals flanking the door. Yeah. Aww. Okay. Yeah. So that's basically what you you would do, because uh, the waterfall would stay down in the top left corner. You'd reset the pedestals, move them, flank the other door, open up room uh, at three o'clock, and that's how that would work. Yeah. I think in the future for these, I might have to make maps to help explain it a little bit better. Probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, one of the. I have made up this entire session on the spot. Eating. Aside from, like, eating, you're not really the why I'm quiet is because brain is just taking mm. a while to picture this. I mean, Which isn't your fault, it's just my brain is takes a while to picture stuff, and it's like, okay, this is what it looks like. This, is, Yeah, I yeah. mean, like I said, uh, I have... I haven't made this up on the spot. I did intend for you to do this temple, but I kind of intended you to do a boss fight set... There was supposed to be a boss fight this session. You're supposed to do that. And then the temple was maybe meant to be next session. So I've kind of just, like, swapped things around. And so I didn't mm -hmm. have all my notes prepared. So I'm kind of like, going, oh, God, my vague ideas. <laughs> mm -hmm. Not, like, not even, like, my vague plans. Vague plans of ideas. Idea. Or ideas of plans. I'm kind of, ah. So um, in the future, I will try and actually have maps and stuff drawn up. So it's a little bit easier to follow. So, yeah, all right. You, you could easily, you reset the pedestals, you go and shove them to uh, block open uh, door at 3 o'clock, and the uh, top left corner, that still has a waterfall coming down on it, so that's there. Okay, you go through. You look into uh, room... Blah, 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 words. Blah. You look at the uh, room at 3 o'clock, same alcove type thing, you see a pedestal, uh, the, and you see two alcoves. One alcove has a fish sphere in it, the other is empty. Uh, the fish sphere is like creating a waterfall over the, the pedestal. So basically the same that was in the, the north room, in the, the 12 o'clock room, except there's now a spare alcove. 
Uh, you can tell we're the brains of the operation. <laughs> um, do we have a do we have a free sphere? Uh, you okay, but there's the one sphere you shouldn't have because you kind of stole it mm -hmm. <laughs> and came right. here with an right, right, right. So you've got that one. You still have the destruction sphere because you took that back. Um. And there is an alcove with a, sh a fish sphere in it that is that's creating a waterfall over the pedestal. Okay, I I take the fish sphere from the um, alcove. Mm -hmm. uh, you remove it. Pedestal is now free and can be moved around and do whatever you want with it. Uh, I lick the sphere. Uh, the the sphere. <laughs> The sphere uh, tastes like cold salt water. Hmm. It's another margarita sphere. Um. I guess we'll push the sphere back to the room. Uh, the pedestal. Yeah. Uh, you you push the pedestal. Uh, I'm assuming you put it in the the one remaining um slot that's open. Yes. Yep. So you do that. And then I assume you put the, the fish there inside of it. Uh, you would assume correctly. Yep. Woof. Uh, you, you do that. And with that, there are now four. There's three little magical circles activated and a waterfall coming down. Uh, the waterfall seems to solidify into a staircase. Uh. Did that actually happen, or am I super high? So just for reference, I just finished making a map. <laughs> <laughs> you finished, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's, uh, let's go up the, the magical about-to-go-away staircase. <laughs> uh, yeah, we go upstairs. All right, you, you head upstairs. Uh, upstairs, you find yourself in uh, in a room, and there is music playing. Uh, well, not music. You, you hear a voice singing. Uh, the voice is ever so slightly distorted, uh, resembling almost a whale song. Uh, it's singing the hymn of the faith. Um, okay, do. Uh, Okay, at this point I might edit in the, the Hymn of the Faith being sung, or I could mm -hmm. just try and sing it myself, uh, but I don't think I can remember off the top of my head. This is the Hymn of the Faith. Um, <laughs> uh, that and there's like a whole bunch more but I don't really remember the rest of it off the top of my head and I I, I was just thinking like oh wait I, I know I have the hymn of the faith like a bunch of different versions of it but if uh, if I started messing around <laughs> it would start playing through like the the, the, the stream and then it, it would kind of goof up a bunch of stuff so, and, and copyright as well also that mm -hmm. which it should be cautious of so I yeah, it's playing there. To figure out how to delete this image. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, so there's that. Uh, this is like a, a small meditation chamber room. Uh, it looks quite serious. You know, there's uh, there's urns that are overflowing with water, and there is a room uh, behind a, a, a large door. The door has like a, a weird symbol on it. Um, the, yeah, you know, just just general Final Fantasy X symbols. Uh, I can't really describe it. <laughs> <laughs> Is this where Raiko goes in by themselves? Um, they they can do, but you are the rebels of the spirit. You can get, go now. We're going in too. We want to see what's what. Reno's already in there. <laughs> Reno's like, yep. <laughs> you walk in, the door uh, slides open. 
Uh, you go in, and on the floor in this room, there is a large uh, circular stone tablet that looks incredibly ornate. Um, it kind of, like, so, like, one side of it, uh, okay, you know what, it kind of forms, like, a, a yin-yang symbol, and one side mm -hmm. is, like, a, a giant fish, uh, a giant whale, and the other side is, like, a human that is kind of, it's got a hand reaching out to, uh, like, grab the, the whale's tail, and it, it, it's this really nice, beautiful, ornate little thing, and, uh, it's kind of, like, sealed off, um, behind, like, uh, a few candles and things like that. It's not like actually sealed off, but you know, it, it's got um, clear and uh, obvious like meditation focusing things based around it. So Raiko mm -hmm. will go mm -hmm. in, they will kneel down in front of it, uh, do the little uh, uh, Yevon prayer thing. So, you know, mm -hmm, bow, and uh, a few moments of silence pass as uh, you you start to feel the room tremble ever so slightly, and uh, water seems to drip down from the walls and ceiling, and almost out of nowhere, the, the water vapor forms into a uh, semi-transparent uh, human-esque figure. Uh, this figure, they are shirtless, uh, they have like a long uh, trench coat on. They've got uh, an eye patch and a pipe and a big, wonderful uh, like black uh, beard with like grayish tints in it. And um, they they kind of look at you. Uh, well, he sorry, it, it's male. I should have specified. He looks at you and goes, "Yar." Yeah. Yar. You be the first I've seen here in many a year. Which one of you be the summit? <laughs> you, you try and lick him? Yeah. <laughs> uh, this this is basically a ghost. This is a faith. It, it's not there. You you pass right through it. You you clamber through the meditation focusing things and you just thwomp. You are now stood on this very, very sacred faith. <laughs> You just stood on this statue, like, no big deal, whatevs, yo. Um, I suppose, uh, they are, and I will gesture towards Raiko. Uh, Raiko kind of like goes, oh, uh, yeah, um, hi. Hi. <laughs> Um, uh, and the faith looks and goes, Yar! I, I see you got mighty spirit in you. I am Bismarck, the protector of the noble fishermen, and friend to all. Well, you know, not all. I've been kind of stuck here for many years. But Yar! Pardon? Couldn't quite hear you properly. So I caught some fish earlier. Yar! So you be a fisher folk. Fisher person. Yar. It's more a hobby. I was trying to feed the chocobos. Ah. Mm. And, uh, how did how does all of yees feel about uh, protecting uh, those who can't protect themselves from great and powerful tragedies? No, I've been that doing it for... Like, how long existence. have we been traveling together? <laughs> um, um, you know, uh, a day? <laughs> also, I've been hi, doing it I'm back, day. and I'm sorry for being gone so long and abruptly. That's ah, fine. <coughs> it's not a problem at all. Uh, you, you're in the, the Chamber of the Faith. Mm. And you, I assume so. Yeah, <laughs> you met Bismarck, and... Um, ATB for your reference. Bismarck basically looks like Drake from Pokemon Emerald. You beautiful. <laughs> Except, you know, somehow more attractive. Saltier. Beautiful. Yeah. And uh Drake is just he not Drake, Bismarck. 
<laughs> Bismarck is, you know, basically saying, uh, I'm Bismarck, uh, I, I, I protect fishermen, and had basically inquired, um, how would you uh, protect uh, those who can't protect themselves? I got a goblin bomb. I've got a whip. Hi, I I got this. Uh, my brain blinked. I I can you repeat the question, please. Sorry. <laughs> Bismarck has <laughs> asked, <laughs> "How would you protect those who cannot protect themselves?" With my life and a sword. <laughs> And she just <laughs> unsheathed her sword. Yeah. Uh, Bismarck reaches up and strokes his magnificent, uh, like, silver, like, speckled gray black beard. And he's very impressed and goes, Hmm. I like you. Yeah. Well. If, if Yar be here to, to, pre to keep the waves safe. And protect those who need it from unmitigated disasters. I will grant you my power. We're pretty sure that one of them is landlocked now. We still his boat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's a reference to something I don't quite understand. <laughs> um, it is fine. Okay, so... Um, Something it, it, it's not like a super pivotal mechanic in the game in the in the game of Final Fantasy X, but I think it I like it. I, I think it's a really cool mechanic, where um, Aeons, whilst yes, only the summoner can summon them, but they are usually connected to a member of the party in some way, shape, or form. So, for example, uh, Ifrit is tied to Waka. So when Waka gets like his ultimate weapon, uh, Ifrit can break the damage limit, and you know they're they're just kind of like connected into one another, and they get they get little buffs and things like that. And obviously, in this game, you know, there, there's rules for like uh, as you can summon this as a group, you can summon uh, uh, something as an individual. So what I think I would quite like is I'd like to give, whilst, yes, Raiko is the summoner, and that's kind of their whole shtick, I think it'd be quite interesting to, you know, if you as individuals find that you have a particular affinity to Aeons, that maybe you might have the ability to summon an Aeon. Not through the traditional means, but if, for example... Uh, you meet their uh, pact bond. So, uh, you know, for example, Bismarck that we have here. Uh, Bismarck has the pact bond. Uh, the devotion, sorry. Where if you... Um, yeah. If you protect the oceans and its defenseless inhabitants from some great catastrophe it foresees looming on the horizon, um, if you prevent this tragedy, you gain uh, the packed gift of Bismarck. And, for example, Bismarck's packed gift is you can breathe underwater. So instead of just, you know, Raiko getting all these different packed gifts, because, you know, Raiko would end up immensely overpowered <laughs> if just like every Aeon that you help out and bond with Raiko gets a boost I think it'd be kind of cool if you as the individual party members if you are directly uh, tied or connected to the Aeon you would get that pack gift Honest, honestly a part of me is thinking like since they were the one who even who found the fish stone in the first place? Uh, Re Reno should have it. Was it Re Reno that found the first fish stone? Uh, the fish stone. Yeah. Fish yeah. Well, obviously. But I think that I think that he was impressed by Lilith because Lilith was 
the most willing to protect. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, I think we can have more of this discussion, you know, like out of character or in between session or things like that. Like, because obviously, you know, we have choices. We can be like, "Ooh, out of character, this is my favorite Aeon, and I want to be connected <laughs> to it." Or we can be like, "Well, who needs a, a power boost? Who would benefit them?" So we can discuss it, and we can meta game it like out of character, and we can do stuff in character. Like, we can figure um, out who is best suited to which Aeon and stuff like that. Or uh -huh. we can literally go, because like, this is one interaction, you know, you, Bismarck is now just going to be around, so you can all interact with Bismarck more in the future and find out, because, you know, you haven't, <laughs> you haven't done his pact boon yet, you haven't, you haven't earned his devotion, you haven't protected from an unmitigated disaster yet, but when that happens, slash if it does happen, you know, then we can start figuring stuff out. So I think that'd be a really cool little thing we can start weaving into the narrative, um, so uh -huh. that... That'll be a fun little thing for us all to think about for the future and all that jazz. All right. But plus, I'm also thinking like if if Wilbur was given the Aeon, then that means in this entire temple, not only did she get did she get two potions, a phoenix down, and also the water breathing bangle, but then she just claims the Aeon and uh, <laughs> and like out of character, I'm just like I don't I want this to temple is mine. Now, see, I got the I got the destruction sphere. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Uh, 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 I got the friendships we made along the way. <laughs> oh, alrighty. Um, so with that, you know, Bismarck will say, "All right, yeah, I'll join you," and we'll pass through Raiko, and Raiko gets like uh, an anime power boost transformation. Um, will all Sailor Moon style. Do -do 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 -do. See, I kind of like the idea as well of each Aeon, like, kind of giving, like, a physical representation of themselves, which I think would be pretty cool. Yeah! My, my mental image of Ifrit was literally the player who has Ifrit wears an eye patch, and to summon Ifrit, they take off the eye patch to reveal fire as their eyes. Yeah, like, you know, just cool little stuff like that, because, you know, Carbon Corn is, like, he's got, like, a little glowing gemstone. So, um, I, I think... Uh, Raiko might start holding it, uh, but what what do we think it should be? Um, to describe what Bismarck's whole deal is, um, Bismarck. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, so Bismarck is water, uh, a giant, big old whale, and um, the other thing Bismarck can do is it's this. Like, Bismarck's like big power is called Sea Song, and it you know, uses music uses a whale song to create a, a giant tidal wave of water so, i have i have an idea and you're yeah. going to hate me what so you mentioned that the how the faith looks of bismarck is drake from pokemon emerald yeah and we all know that the favorite trumpet of the hoenn games is the trumpet the favorite instrument of the home games is the trumpet mm -hmm. what if the way to, to summon bismarck was you got this trumpet and you just play it and then giant whale appears i mean i was kind of leaning in towards like a a, a sea conch but i like trumpet uh, that would work uh, yeah. sea, sea conch would work I, no, and I, what I came up with was in between those two, which was a scrimshod ocarina. <laughs> that would also be great. I kind of just want a trumpet that's vaguely whale aesthetic, but like not like a full size trumpet, like maybe like a, a small trumpet trinket on a necklace. So you lift it up when it's tiny, and you go. Like the trumpet doesn't make any noise. You have to go do 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 do. <laughs> You have to make the dudes. <laughs> Dooting intensifies. So yeah, so you, you get a small a small necklace appears. Uh, Raiko will uh, take it in their hands, and uh, uh, what we can figure out if this would be better suited to someone else, or who will gain the benefit if and when you um, get that devotion from Bismarck. But yes, uh, you now have access to Bismarck. Yay! Mm -hmm. You did your first temple. Um, 
and you uh, apparently are just stealing uh, the destruction sphere and one fish spear. Oh, you remember me coming up with that idea for Reno's next thing mm -hmm. after she after she jumps jobs. Well, what if I put the destruction sphere on it? Oh God! <laughs> I can't, can't wait to see what this mystery thing is. All right. So, with all of that done, uh, I assume you, you know, get all your stuff, pack up, and then head out the temple. Um, <laughs> <laughs> How do we get out of the temple, by the way? Uh, same way you got in. You'd have to swamp, put a little thing in. However, that will fill the temple back up with water, and you'll have to swim through. Um, I'm not going to bother making you roll stuff for that, just because... I mean, what you could do, I guess, is you could just have Raiko summon Bismarck, and Bismarck will catch you all in his mouth and just swim you out. Uh, I'm I'm good either way. I'm just very entertained by the image of Bismarck coming up in the water next to the Trump boat. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. So you know. Um, yeah, so we'll say you do all that, you, you go, you, you open the doors, uh, this does mean that you will end up losing the, the fish spear, because if you need to do, because if you get in Bismarck to pull you out. No! But I keep the destruction sphere, right? You can keep the destruction sphere. That one tasted more, more interesting. I mean, actually, you could just steal a different fish spear once you walk down the stairs from the the chamber. You could go down, just take a fish spear out, and then take the stairs back down and leave. So you, you can keep, you can grab a spear. Uh, like, I don't know why, but I think you just want to collect these things. So, I'm okay with that. <laughs> so, yeah. We'll say you get a spare fish spear, you get that, you open the door, um, Raiko will summon Bismarck, we'll go do 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 uh, as the doors open, water comes flying in, Bismarck, you know, wonderful, magnificent uh, summoning sequence, exactly how you imagine it would look, as this <laughs> giant, beautiful, majestic whale kind of goes, oh, comes, gulps you up in the mouth. I have a question. Go for it. Why is the Doot song the power-up star song from Mario Brothers? Um, because I don't remember any of the music from Pokemon Emerald off the top of my head. And when I, <laughs> when I say doot, I immediately go towards that. That's just my, my go-to. Doot. <laughs> it took me a while to realize what it was. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we, we will solidify what the doot music is uh, in the future. But, but. So, you know, Bismarck boom, grabs you all and you just... Okay, so choices. You can either, when you Bismarck uh, emerges at the top of the water, you can either Bismarck will open his mouth and let you crawl out, or Bismarck will blow you through uh, the blowhole, and you can have a really cool anime sequence as you like go. What? I mean, is that even a question? Like, <laughs> I, I don't think so, but I feel I should at least pose it to you. So we'll wave it. We'll wave at coupon is for falling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you get blasted out of a blowhole. Uh, it's as anime as you know. Actually, I'll let you. I'll let you describe anything you want to do as you get blasted out to land on the deck of the boat. Um... <laughs> do you remember the the coupon pose uh, when they did the multiple coupons? Yep. I feel like we try to do that and fail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, on board, I'm on board with that. <laughs> I love it. And so I, I love the image of you try to do a pose, you kind of land, just kind of like fall over a little bit. And I love the idea of Raiko. Raiko lands and tries to do a little pose, slips, falls on their ass, and then Tom Tom falls and just lands on their head. Just goes, whoop! Hits the head and lands uh, in my lap and goes, hi, coupon, we're back. You made a friend. Our friend's a whale. But also, I think a pirate. Or, you know, a sea captain or something. I don't know, it's weird. 
and we had a fun time. Uh, to to wrap up this session, uh, you you just kicked up a lot of fuss and a lot of palaver down there, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Does anyone want to roll me an observation, please? Mm -hmm. uh, awareness, sorry, not observation. That's not a thing. Mm, I shouldn't do that. <laughs> I can roll awareness. So, yeah. Every time I do this now, I have to make sure that I'm in the roll 20 and not the Twitch chat. <laughs> uh, ten. ten. Mm. So, um, of course, there'll be a little bit of disturbance uh, and whatnot, because you, you know, you've been opening and closing doors and making water come hither and, hither and thither from this temple. So you expect there to be a little bit of activity in the water. Um, however, there's more than you expect. And literally, right where you are, we'll say Bismarck is dispelled. Uh, just for ease. Because Bismarck does actually dispel automatically after doing his big ultimate attack. And we'll say that's what the, the blowhole thing was. Um, there, there's a lot of movement in the water. And... As you look, you notice two large tentacles, one on either side of the boat. One just kind of glomps up on the left-hand side, one glomps up on the right-hand side, and appearing just at the the end of the, the bow, at the front, you can see what I can only describe as a demonic-looking octopus bastard. Do it, do it, we better scoot. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so this is when you time. say avocado. Yeah. <laughs> the octopus has an eye patch. Uh, <laughs> just because I, I want to tie into that stupid aquarium <laughs> thing we were talking about. And that just kind of <laughs> goes up. And you see it, it, it's more, uh, very much like the Kraken from um, Pirates of the Caribbean 2. Kind of like opens and just like a huge maw of teeth. And it's kind of like poised itself at the end of a boat and it lets out a big terrifying roar as you're all stood on the boat and that will be where we end today's session avocado <laughs> so uh thank you uh malcolm's gonna pose with his whip and say uh that's far too many teeth I'm gonna rush towards <laughs> Reno's gonna There's rush three towards kinds it. of people. <laughs> okay. Reno's rushing towards the towards the giant kraken. Everyone else is just paralyzed in All fear. Right. So, uh, thank you everybody for tuning in and being a part of this. I will have this edited and uploaded to YouTube Monday or Tuesday, uh, maybe Wednesday, depending on how distracted I get by things. So that'll be done. Uh, I have been the Bardic Knock. You can find me on the internet, Twitter, Twitter, Twitch, Patreon, and YouTube, all as the Bardic Knock. Um, I had so much fun. I love this game. And <laughs> I, I'm glad that that kind of worked out all right. Me semi making up a lot of that on the spot. It kind of maps. Need to folk need to do that for some of these things, but that's uh, a future thing to work on. Um. All right, birthday girl, and you want to sign out for us? <laughs> uh, hi, I'm a tired bye. and don't and it, it won't be it won't be my birthday when this is post it when this is posted to the YouTube's, but right now on Twitch, it is my birthday, and uh, I'm I'm sorry for having to go to uh, leave and step away. Uh, my family has been like calling me out a lot, even though I have been in the game. But, but yeah, basically a lot of stuff kept coming up, and I had to like actually get up and leave. Yeah, my family calls me out a lot too. Yeah. yeah. yeah uh, it's not a it's not a problem at all. It doesn't really interrupt anything too bad, though. Yeah. Also, it also for puzzles my brain works very weird and it takes me a long time to figure stuff out so yeah anyway uh you can find me here 
uh, every second Sunday. You you can also find me on whenever I'm not working in Bardic Streams, in which case I'll be in the chat just talking or making terrible puns or other things. Or I might just be lurking. Uh, also, I will, uh, every second Thursday, I am on the Undead Case channel where we're playing Curse of Strahd. And we're just about to leave the village of Barovia, which is in the land of Barovia. And it's going to be good. It's going to be great. Mm. Uh, aside from that, uh, usually if you've, usually wherever my friends go, I might be there. All depending. And you might also find me on various Discord channels. I'm also, also on Bardic's own Discord. I am also playing along with them in Final Fantasy VI. So if you want so, and I post screenshots from time to time, so that could be a thing to look forward to. Just don't yell at me for naming some of the characters weird things. I always look forward to like it. Purple. It's always fun. Uh, what? I always look forward to seeing the screenshots and seeing how it's going. Uh, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, how I how need to update people on what's been going on. I haven't posted screenshots in a while. Alrighty, uh, Natch, who are you? Uh, hey, it's me, Nat, your best friend, your resident innuendo daddy, and, uh, Red Mage. Um, you can find me on Twitter with all my hot takes, uh, at Natural1, and you can pretty much just find me here where you are seeing me right now. Not anywhere else right now. Uh, but if you want me in your game, I'm pretty open, and I'm entertaining as brick. So, uh, so uh, yeah, yeah, get at me, yo. <laughs> okay, that's it for me. <laughs> and finally, Rain. Rain Hayes. Uh, you can find me here playing this, as well as on Shay Foxy's channel every Tuesday night playing Orlight Codex Calgary, which is based on the best-selling novel series that, again, she wrote. Um, I'll also be on that channel Saturday nights playing Chronicles of Darkness. Uh, and I have a secret project that I'm supposed to remind Bark to read. <laughs> yes, I shall do this. I, I got reminded. I will open that up right after I close everything down here. So I, I will remember to open it and I'll, I'll probably try and read it later tonight because I don't think I've got much else we need to do today I think maybe we'll see alrighty uh, once again thank you everybody and until oh also our fourth player who was feeling ill today uh, but you will see them next time uh, is Kupo Knight uh, K-U-P zero Knight on Twitter and Kupo underscore Knight on Twitch they're a wonderful human being show them love and hopefully they will feel better for next time. But until then, stay safe and happy adventures. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.